Per Mark Silverman of ESPN 1000, the Chicago Bears are concerned with Chase Claypool talked about how the front office could have some issues with Chase's work ethic. We'll talk about should the Bears be concerned by Claypool and what he's actually bringing to the game on today's episode of the Windy City Breeze Sports Talk Daily. Let's go. Now, if you are new to the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the page. We do talk Chicago sports daily on this channel. It's the only channel talk Chicago sports, how Chicago talk. So make sure that you get in tune with us, man. So Chase Claypool under a little bit of concern uh, from the front office, according to Mark Silverman, says he's hearing from his sources inside of Hallis that there are some concerns around what Claypool brings, says he's not self-motivated enough. He doesn't want to go out there, I guess, and put in enough of the work and uh, is not doing enough on the off the field stuff. I talked with John Yurkovich yesterday on yesterday's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast about this, and he basically said, you know, we can hear what Justin Fields and Coach Flus are saying and say, you know, that they are speaking glowingly of this guy um but when you're when you're talking about a teammate you're not supposed to be in the media talking down about him and you know even though Justin Fields has said that Chase has worked on himself he likes the work he's put in this offseason he feels like he's absolutely improved as a player you still have that part of uh, uh um of that part of concern based on what we saw last season, right? And I think that's the part that you, that gets you a little bit nervous when you hear these things coming out of Hallis. Here's my thing with Chase Claypool, though. When I look at the kind of player that Chase Claypool can be, if we're sitting here talking about work ethic issues or whatever that is, I'm really sitting here trying to figure out where we have issue with his work ethic. I know everybody always goes back to the, uh, you know, I wish we had more music during pr uh, uh, practice when he got, when him and Mike Tomlin got into it a little bit over that. And I guess the fact that Mike Tomlin was more so willing to give up on uh, Claypool and trade him away for that second round pick. You know, a lot of people are looking at that and saying, well, did Tomlin know something? Are we, uh, did we miss out on this? Is he an issue? Is he a problem in the locker room? And I just, I don't know if we're there yet, right? Like it's very early in the off season. We didn't see much of him. So there's not much of, for us to go out there and look at and say, okay, this is who he really is in a Chicago bears uniform. But I do think a change of culture is a little bit different. Listen, apparently the bears have no problem with music during practice and stuff like that. We've seen, you know, clips where they're, they're, they've got the music going while they're on the field, warming up and different things like that. Like, I don't think that there's a big issue with who Claypool is, Outside of football, I think the question mark is, is he going to be able to produce here? And the only person that can answer that question is Chase Claypool. And the problem is he hasn't been on the field enough to do it. And realistically, that's it, because I'm not going to lie to you. When I look at Claypool's numbers... I don't see a guy that gives me concern or that gives me pause, right? I mean, you look at his first two seasons, pretty much identical in the NFL to that rookie season where we were so excited. Is he scoring the same amount of touchdowns? No, but you also have to take into account that he did not have the same players on his team. That second year, right? He's dealing with injured Ben Roethlisberger and Mason Rudolph. And then third year, you got Mitch Trubisky and Kenny throw a picket out there, right? Like, so uh, to me, I, I don't see a player who has underperformed or has struggled to get the job done. His rookie season, he was targeted 109 times, caught 62 passes for 14 yards per reception and had nine touchdowns. The second year, he scored less touchdowns. Of course he did. He had a worse quarterback. And then that third year, right, not a lot of touchdowns there. Either had one touchdown in Pittsburgh, pretty much his only one, but dealt with injury last season when he came over from the Steelers, wasn't really able to get himself acclimated here, had the concussion issues. So I think that there was just a lot of things that went against him last season uh and i don't know if i'm that concerned about chase claypool being a part of this team i do think he needs to go out there and prove it let me know how you guys are feeling in the comments below i'll be down there talking with you guys as well how are you feeling about chase claypool do you think that bears fans should be concerned based on the reports that are coming out of hallis that he doesn't work hard enough and here's what i'll say about all of that at the end of the day when it comes to not working hard enough what are we trying to get him to work to 
I'm not looking for Chase Claypool to be our number one wide receiver. Pittsburgh wasn't looking for Chase Claypool to be their number one wide receiver. You want to know why? Because when Juju Smith-Schuster was there, they went to him. When uh, Antonio Brown was there, they went to him. And then on, on uh, um, you know, when, when it got to um, the last season where he's out there, they went to George Pickens. Now, would you say maybe last season was the time where you wanted to see him step up the most? Probably, right? That would have been good. But again, not the quarterback play that you wanted to see out of Pittsburgh and realistically, Pickett and Pickens just kind of fit well together. They they built the vibe up, and so there wasn't that space for Claypool to be there anymore. Now he's got to build that vibe up in Chicago. The only concern that I have is the fact that he's not on the field building that vibe. I hope that the, the ex expectation is he'll be out there by training camp, right? It was OTAs. It was mini camp. They didn't want to push anything. They didn't want to stress anything. My hope is that he'll be out there by training camp because I think that's going to be the time where he's going to be able to build up the most rapport with Justin, but he's also somebody who's worked with Justin in the offseason and worked with him down in Florida, right? Him and Khalil Herbert were both out there. Uh, DJ Moore, I believe, is going to be going out there with him as well on the next round. So, like, I, I don't... I don't have these overwhelming concerns. And when it comes to working hard enough, I just need you to work hard enough to be a solid number two so that DJ Moore can't get double teamed. That's all I need. Like, realistically, when we're talking about his role on this team, he's either the two or the three. He might even be the three in most senses of it because of the rapport that Darnell Mooney and uh, Justin Fields have built up. But... I just I don't see this world where Chase Claypool just being the guy that he was 109 targets, 62 receptions, 873 yards, nine touchdowns is a bad thing. I don't and even the next season, right again, only two touchdowns, but the yards per reception goes up. He's catching it at a higher percentage. Um, he, he was 56 percent catching or catching the ball 56 percent of the time. Maybe I'd like to see that go up a little bit, but I just I don't have these overwhelming concerns about Jace Claypool because he's not here to be the number one anymore. Now, if he was here to be the number one, yeah, maybe I'd be a little more concerned that I'm hearing that my wide receiver isn't working hard enough. But again, I say this. What are we trying to get him to work to be? That's my biggest question with all of it. I do want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you guys as well. Is there a major concern about Chase Claypool? To me, there's not. There's the only concern that I have is the same concerns I have with half the people that have been on the Bears uh, offensive side of the football. Can they stay healthy enough to be on the field? That's my only concern right now because I think he's going to build up that rapport with Justin Fields if he's on the field and ready to go. Let me know how you guys feel, though. As always, it's your boy Pat the Designer back at it again to continue watching our Chicago Bears content click the links on the screen or check the links in the description below and if you're only here for bears content make sure you're also subscribed to the chicago bears breeze which will pop up over here uh because that will also that is all, all of our bears content only bears content on the chicago bears breeze non-stop bears so tune in with us over there as always man y'all stay safe out there chicago one love peace